Well, I'm here today with my congressman, Congressman Mike Johnson from Louisiana's 4th District. And Congressman Johnson, we're here for the March for Life that's happening tomorrow. And just wanted to ask you a few questions. You know, we're right by the Supreme Court and we may see Roe versus Wade be overturned this year, which would be truly historic and save countless lives. But tell us, why is being pro-life so important to you personally? Well, like you, I've been involved in this most of my life. Um, I turned 50 in January, so I'm just a year older than Roe. I was born to a, a, a teen mother. My mom was had just turned 17 when I was born. I'm the oldest of four children. She and my father dropped out of school to, to begin a family, and it wasn't planned. But at that time, it was a year before Roe, but abortion was still a big issue. And in Louisiana, they had a, a lot of friends and contemporaries uh, try to talk to them about their options. Thankfully, my parents um, were faithful folks, and they knew that wasn't right. And so um, I'm here. And so I've always been very deeply involved in the pro-life movement for some obvious reasons. But understanding that every single person has inestimable dignity and value, because we believe and we know that all of us are made in the image of God. And so our value is inherent because we're a creation uh, of, of God himself. And that's what the Declaration, the nation's birth certificate, affirms, right? So for 49 years, the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, has denied that truth, the, the most basic, most fundamental truth about who we are, not only as Americans, but as human beings. And we're excited because we believe this may well be the year. I think there's at least five of the justices, maybe six, um, who are ready to right this wrong. And this will be a big day for the country. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story uh, with us. And, you know, I've had the privilege of getting to see the pro-life work that you've done in Louisiana even before you became a congressman. But can you tell folks what are some of the things you're working on now and maybe even some of the things you've done in the past on this important issue? Yeah, for about 20 years before I got to Congress, I, I was a constitutional law attorney, a litigator, and found myself on the front lines, as it were, defending the sanctity of human life and religious liberty and um, all of our First Amendment values, and uh, they had been under assault. They still are. You can make the argument now more than ever. Uh, but over the years, we uh, defended life in the courts and in the court of public opinion. We, it fell to us to defend a lot of, uh, help defend a lot of Louisiana's uh, pro-life statutes. Where we, we like to make the case that we're the number one state in America, although we go back and forth on the ratings. Uh, but um, the people of our state believe in the sanctity of human life. And we've tried to be a faithful defender of that cause. So now we're doing it in Congress in a little different capacity. Um, one of the, the big efforts that we do here is I serve on the Judiciary Committee, and I'm um, the ranking Republican member on the Constitution Subcommittee, which is ground zero for all these issues uh, concerning life and abortion and everything else. And so uh, these are interesting days. You know, the landscape is going to change one way or the other, we, we believe. Um, the decision will fall it, if, if it, uh, this goes the right way back to the states where it should have been all along. And the battleground, as it were, will shift there. Um, our state, we're blessed, is one that will be an abortion-free jurisdiction. But as we know, those would be some states that go the other way. So it's going to be a very interesting time in American politics and policy and culture. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, what do you think Americans need to know about the fight for life now and moving forward? You know, uh, the landscape has changed in many ways already prior to the outcome of this case uh, because of the advancement, for one thing, of medical technology. You know, we're not making the same arguments that we had to make 20 years ago because everybody can see a full 4D ultrasound now. We know that this is not a blob of tissue as they used to try to tell us a clump of cells. This is a, a small human being, a, a child. And so we make the point in judiciary all the time when they bring in the abortion advocates and the industry folks, and, and I ask them, frankly, they're under oath, and I say, tell me, help me with the, the logical extension here. Like, you know, you guys say that you would not condone the murder of a small child, right? Well, what about uh, a newborn? You say no. Well, then what's the difference between a newborn child and, and nine inches up the birth canal? What, I mean, principally, what is the argument? And they turn and howl and scowl and say that we're attacking them personally. They have no answer for that. So I, I think the charge we have right now, Nicole, is that all of us who believe in the sanctity of human life, who understand the basics of, of medical fact, uh, need to be vocal about it. Reach out a renewed hand of compassion to people who are in crisis pregnancy situations, as we, we know, um, and, and, and talk to people, make them understand, make them face the facts, because when they do, uh, people turn their, their, uh, their decisions on this. And, um, you know, when you, when you show an ultrasound to an abortion-minded woman, she changes her mind 80% or more of the time. So it's up to us to share the truth, and now's a great time to do it. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Congressman, for your great work on this issue. The truth really is on our side. And I'm so thankful that we have folks like you in Congress that are standing and protecting the preborn. And I'm grateful for all you do and continue to do, all the folks in the movement. And uh, you're really brave to be out here in the cold. It is very, very cold right now. Very. So God bless you. <laughs> thank you so much, Congressman. Sure.